Now, next important point we are going to discuss is triggers of massive blood transfusion protocol. The trigger will be a score that is ABC score. That means assessment of blood component score. If the value of this assessment of blood component score is more than 2, then the patient definitely requires massive blood transfusion protocol. The component of this ABC score is first, presence of penetrating injury. Second, positive fast, that means focused assessment with sonography for trauma. And third is, heart rate of the patient is more than 100 per minute. And fourth is, systolic blood pressure of the patient is less than 90 mm of H. And each of these parameters are given one point. And other triggers are postpartum hemorrhage, penetrating traumatic injury, hematomasis due to peptic ulcer disease, and major blood vessel trauma during surgery. Now, when we start MTP, most of the time in the blood vein, they will be providing a red cooler vein. In this red cooler bag, there will be 6 units of peg diabetes. Plasma may be initially stored inside, but then you kept outside because you need to throw the plasma. Please understand that plasma is stored at minus 30 degrees Celsius. So, minus 30 would be like frozen, right? So, you need to let it thaw and come to room temperature. Now, platelets are not kept in the cooler bag. We all know platelets are stored at room temperature between 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. Now, once we initiated MTP, we will call the blood bank and inform MTP protocol to be initiated. And then we will assign team members whose job would be to do specific tasks. Now, why that is important? Because every person in your team should be knowing what is to be done. So, we are going to divide our team into team A, team B and team C. Now, the person who was assigned as team member A, his job would be to administer blood components to the patient. However, this person will not be responsible for drawing any blood sample and he will not be responsible for labeling of any blood sample. Neither will he be responsible to make entry in the file for the units of blood. Okay. Now, team B person, his job will be mainly record keeping. Apart from record keeping, he will also be doing sampling of the patient for complete blood count, complete metabolic profile. Metabolic profile would mean liver function test, renal function test of the patient, coagulogram of the patient, that is PT and activated partial thromboplastin time, and an ABG of the patient from the radial artery. So that we can now regarding the metabolic acidosis component of the patient. He will be doing labeling of the sample and, and he will be making an entry in the file of the units of blood and whatever code is mentioned on the blood bank. So that proper documentation is maintained because lots of time despite of our efforts patient can be done. So we need to be very secure from the medical legal perspective. Last person in team C will mainly be a runner. His job will be mainly to go to blood bag, get the cooler bag and come back to the hospital. Now, team member A, remember he is the one who is responsible for administrating blood component or any other product to the patient. So, he will give 1 gram of tranexamic acid to the patient. Now, this is an antifibrinolytic agent which has been documented to be a great efficacy especially in surgically induced bleeding. This 1 gram IV will be given state, followed by it will given 8 hourly to the patient. Now, after that, he will basically connect the pressurized rapid transfuser to the patient and prime it with the units of blood. Then he will give the 4 units of packed RBCs, obviously be O negative and will be giving 2 units of fresh frozen plasma will be AB positive. And once we give these to the patient, most of the time, we have a recovery in a sense that the bleeding part might significantly reduce in the patient. We will reassess the patient at the end of round 1. On reassessing, if he improves, okay. Otherwise, we go to round 2 in the patient. So, assuming the fact that there is no improvement in the patient, he is still bleeding. In these circumstances, we will start round 2. We will now be once again infusing 4 units of packed RBCs. 4 units of fresh frozen plasma and 1 unit of single donor platelet. 
Remember, initially we did not use the platelets in round 1. But now we have used platelet in round 2. Then we will resend the labs of the patient. Now, in this round, we will now be giving calcium gluconate to the patient. Now, why calcium gluconate? Because there is citrate in the packed RBC and that citrate binds with calcium and it can trigger tetany. So, to prevent the development of tetany and the possible laryngospasma, we give calcium gluconate in round 2. We may even use cryoprecipitate in round 2. Now, this is the new thing which I did not mention initially because most of the time we use only PRBCs, fresh frozen plasma and platelet. But cryoprecipitate may even be required if the fibrinogen value in the patients are turning out to be less. Now, most of the time your patient will improve, but if your patient will not improve, then we will take another round. You are going to enter into round 3 for the management of patient. Once again, we are going to give 4 units of packed RBC, 4 units of FFP and 1 unit of single donor platelet. Now, the extra thing that we will do in round 3 is, we will administer factor 7A. Let us look at the indication of giving factor 7A in the patient. One of the indications would be the surgical hemostasis has been achieved. The body temperature of the patient has also stabilized. When he came, he was hypothermic. The pH of the patient is also stabilized. So you have taken care of metabolic acidosis and the hypothermia component of the patient, but is still bleeding. That is when we give factor 7A.